Ben Hugh, the Wuhan scientist who was named the alleged patient zero for COVID-19, is speaking out. In an email, Hugh told Science Magazine, quote, the recent news about so-called patient zero in Wuhan Institute of Virology are absolutely rumors and ridiculous, who denied that he was sick in late 2019 or that his coronavirus work led to COVID-19. Hugh also wrote, I did not get sick in autumn 2019 and did not have COVID-19-like symptoms at the time. My colleagues and I tested for antibodies for SARS-CoV-2 in early March 2020, and we were all negative. This follows a long-awaited report from the Office of the Director of National Intelligence that was released Friday that says scientists at the Wuhan, Wuhan Institute of Virology did not conduct research on coronaviruses and, quote, in some cases had inadequate safety measures and had genetically engineered viruses. But the intelligence agencies said they have found nothing that tells them that work at the laboratory caused the pandemic, the New York Times writes. The report said, quote, the IC has no information, however, indicating that any WIV genetic engineering work has involved SARS-CoV-2, a closed progenitor, or a backbone virus that is closely related enough to have been the source of the pandemic. In the report, the office said that all agencies of the government continue to assess that both a natural and laboratory-associated origin remain plausible hypotheses to explain the first human infection. The report confirms that the Wuhan lab did not always adhere to safety protocols in studying coronaviruses. The report allegedly does not include new intelligence, but instead contains details of intelligence that the government has had for over two years, according to uh, U.S. Right to Know. Joining us now to discuss is founder of One Shared World, Jamie Metzl. Welcome, Jamie. Thank you. Happy to be here. So what should people think? Obviously, there was um, this incredible reporting from Michael Schellenberger uh, and others about uh, who, being, uh, who being patient zero. Subsequently, it was confirmed by the Wall Street Journal's reporting. And now, I've, I've been asking this whole time, has anyone spoke to Ben Hu? Now we know the answer. Ben Hu has spoken. And he says, it wasn't me. I, there's, I did not have COVID. And people are pushing back against this. What should we make of it? Uh, if Ben Hu is patient zero, that would be significant. I've not yet seen evidence confirming that's the case. The Michael Schellenberger and the Wall Street Journal uh, published pieces uh, saying that sources inside the United States government had had made those uh, made those claims. And if it's true, it's significant. And, and it, so far, it's just not proven. Um, so, what is your response to the report? Uh, that, you know, finally came out, it delayed a, a week or so. Uh, to my mind, it was very disappointing. It doesn't, you know, it, it, it's basically a summary, again, of what various government agencies think, which is they don't know. But, yeah. you know, I was hoping for actually not just a summary of what they know, but like actually what they know, right? What caused, what in raw intelligence caused the Energy Department and the FBI to make a conclusion that is different from other government agencies? That was what I was hoping to get here. Uh, we did not get that. So I think many of us were, were hoping that we would get more than we got. Um, and my sense of it is that the United States government essentially doesn't know. And with the available, albeit circumstantial evidence, different U.S. intelligence agencies are leaning in one direction or another. And that's why those of us on the outside are trying to read the tea leaves of and parsing the, the language here. The U.S. intelligence community is in a bit of a rough situation. Uh, in, in many ways, what we are experiencing now is the after effects of the intelligence failures in the run up to the Iraq war, where the intelligence community was pressured to release um, unprocessed raw data and then that raw data was used to drive decisions that were ultimately wrong. Um, so I think there's a level of institutional caution that's now built into how these how these different um, agencies function. But the summary is there are two viable hypotheses, research related origin uh, and a quote unquote natural origin. And we need to keep digging and, and pushing. I don't think the United States government is, is, has all of this information and, and is sitting on it. Um, and I think that we, we, are, we can't, 20 million people are dead from this totally avoidable pandemic. We can't just move on. We need to keep digging. And we need to also keep demanding that the Chinese government end its criminal cover-up, uh, which is what is, is making it so difficult to get the kind of basic data and evidence that we would need. And if China had been more 
forthcoming and transparent, we would already know how this pandemic started. Uh, right, and and that's you know if they want to acquit these scientists and their behavior, we I, we can't just take their word for it that they took an antibody test. Like let's see those lab results. Right. Let, you know, let the rest of the world see them. It, it's and it, it's not even like an espe I mean, I think there's plenty of reason to be especially distrustful of the Chinese government, but you would you know you would not take the word of of any of any government, the U.S. government, uh, a private company, who just saying no 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 we didn't do it we weren't negligent we have evidence we didn't do it. That's it. Move on. Like that wouldn't be satisfactory in any situation. Yeah, that, that's a hundred percent correct, and it's kind of preposterous uh, to even use that as evidence, which we're seeing it all, all across the media, where, where people are saying, "Well, um, they, the uh, uh, Xu Jiang Li tested everybody in her lab uh, in March of 2020, and everyone tested negative on a serology test," and that's just statistically impossible based on the prevalence of COVID-19 infection in Wuhan at the time. So uh, we really need to just keep digging. And, and certainly many of us were disappointed um, by the ODNI release. Again, I don't think that, that the ODNI is engaged in some kind of cover-up. Frankly, I served in the United States government. I don't think the United States government is capable of a cover-up <laughs> at, uh, at this scale. Um, but we need to keep digging keep pressure, uh, keep uh, pushing. One of the things that I've been calling for for uh, more than three years now is a bipartisan U.S. National COVID-19 Commission that could create another avenue uh, for doing more work. But one thing that we can't do is simply move on and, and forget the, the 20 million lost lives, because if we do, that sets us, uh, sets us up for even worse failure in the future. Jamie, uh, former science writer for The Economist and author Matt Ridley uh, pushed back against uh, Ben Hu's claims, saying that there's evidence that we know that he's not telling the truth. There are contradictions between what he said, the work that he says he was doing, and the work right. that the evidence says that he was doing. So Ben Hu, of course, said that he never worked with live SARS like coronaviruses. Um, Matt Ridley points out that in 2017, there seems to be evidence um, that he in fact did. He tweeted uh, that Ben Hu said back then, in addition to epidemiological investigation and sequence analysis, we also conducted cellular infection experiments to investigate the potential cross-species transmission ability of the newly discovered SARS-like coronavirus in bats. I mean, how do you look at contradictions like that? Do you see that as evidence supporting the, the idea that Ben uh, Hu might be lying? So I don't think we can, as we said before, a scientist in China, particularly a scientist working in a very sensitive area uh, like coronaviruses at a time like like now, it's not the same as interacting with a scientist in New Zealand or Canada or the United States or, or a more open society. So the credibility of these scientists is absolutely essential. I mean, Matt it, it was right to point out that uh, that inconsistency. Uh, Shu Zheng Li, who, who runs this lab at the, at the Wuhan Institute of Virology, in which uh, Ben Hu uh, works, I had asked her a question in March of 2021, whether she knew about all of the work happening at the Wuhan Institute of Virology, and whether the Chinese military, the PLA, was engaged or involved with this work in any, in any way at all. And she categorically said no. So the new ODNI report makes the, the very strong and I think irrefutable claim that, that that was not the case, that the PLA did have a role at the Wuhan Institute of Virology, which means that Shu Zheng Li was not telling the truth when she responded to my question in March of, uh, of 2021. And so why is that important? Well, the entire case pretty much against a research-related origin rests upon Shu Zheng Li's assertion uh, that the precursor, possible precursor viruses uh, to SARS-CoV-2 uh, we're not being held at the Wuhan Institute of Virology, but we have no idea what viruses were being held there, what work was being done, and who was doing that work. So everything rests on the credibility of these Chinese scientists who may well be honorable people, but they are, are, are working in an authoritarian environment where they aren't free to just be totally open and, uh, and transparent. And so it, it just would be preposterous uh, if, uh, if the case against a research-related origin 
um, rested upon the unverified word of Chinese scientists. Mm. Jamie Metzl, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure, anytime.